is going on here with Nate to wait and I want to show you guys a really neat trick on the continuation of part three behind the mix on this particular mix that I started to show you guys. Now this trick is to help you guys control transients on your, for example, kick, snare or other type of transient based instrument. And what I've done here, I've pretty much been able to resample this particular snare that I was working on. And because I didn't really like the way the transient sounded, and I'll just kind of show you what I'm talking about when I say the transient. So if you can see this part of the snare here, it's really sharp and the transient's quite loud at this part of the, the actual snare. So what I did, I cut this section of the snare and I went into the loudest part, so around about here, and kind of just cut off at the silence here, so the zero point crossing there. And what I kind of did there is then I just used this to sort of minimize some of the actual snare. Um, it depends on how much you want to remove, and this is to taste. So obviously you don't have to go and do exactly what I did, um, base it on what your snare sounds like. But then what I did here as well is because I know the points here and I know my snare should be ending around here at this stage, I really wanted to get rid of that tail of the snare. So I cut that off completely and got rid of it so that I didn't have that section of the snare there and I also then reduced some of that as well. So what this is doing, it's shortening down the snare and I'll just show you what happens then when you bounce it out. I've got this into a mono so it's going to form into a mono snare. So you can see how much difference uh, the snare, if I just make this one into mono as well so you can see what the differences are. Um, you can see the difference between the length of the tail on that snare, so a lot of the reverb has been removed. So that also assists in, if I wanted to add my own reverb, I could do that. Um, it allows then to be, obviously, the, the actual transient, the first part of the transient that hits with that snare, it's a little bit less harsh when you first hear the snare. So you can manipulate sort of samples that you have already inside of your project so say for example you, you get sent a project or you're working on your own project and this is something about that snare or the kick or whatever it is you can do the same thing with your kicks as well um, something about the kick that you don't like for example this part here I probably wouldn't like that kind of a really sharp transient at the start of the kick so I might remove some of that um, you can also do this with transient uh, shapers as well as compression but there's just something about adding or editing I should say the actual snare itself and then getting an an additional sort of uh, sound to it or removing sort of sounds to it that you didn't like. So the really cool thing about Studio One is that you can actually use this sample. So if you just cut the sample and I've got a shortcut key on my keyboard, which is uh, zero on my keyboard. And what it does, it puts it into sample one. So I'm allowed to then use this sample and you can see in sample one, now I've got this particular sample lined up. I just get the zero crossing, move this uh, back to zero where I want it to go, if it'll do it. Oh man, this thing's funny. Sometimes it doesn't like to uh, do what you ask it. Anyway, there we go. So you just move that up to the uh, the snare that I've got. And depending on where I want the, you know, the start of the transient, I could just zoom in really close and just get that to hit right on the transient or just before it. So it leaves a little bit of space. And that would allow me then to sample, or I should say resample that snare. So if I hit my keyboard, if it's actually soloed, you can hear the snare. And that gives me a whole lot more flexibility as well as using filters, um, using the amp cutoff so that, again, I can adjust the attack, the decay, the release and sustain on this snare and go through all of those par parameters here and edit the snare how I want. So a whole lot more flexibility. Secondly, once you've got that sampled inside of sample one, I'll just delete this out because I don't need it. Um, but what you can do then is inside of Studio One, when you get your instruments, for example, this snare track, you can analyze it on this top bar here. So this question mark, by the way, if you hit that, it'll tell you everything about what's going on here. So it's just a good tip if you don't know much about Studio One to be able to get all the stuff you want working for you. So anyway, I'll turn that off and I'll just go to this little thing that looks like kind of a waveform. And what I would do then is hit that. You can use this on standard or sensitive mode. I tend to use standard for drums because it's got a drum setting here and you can leave that as uh, the setting that you need. And um, that's for, for stretch as well, so time stretching. And the little eye mode. So if you turn that on, which I've already done the analyze. So basically at the start here, you hit analyze. It applies the analyst to that. Um, if you zoom in, you can see these little blue markers on each snare where it's really picked up the transient point. And the second thing that you do is if you have sample one already loaded here, you can just drag and drop, literally just drag and drop. So if I just deleted this out and I just drag this down here, 
it will then move the transients that came off of that sent that uh, that pickup originally. And inside of this, I've got my MIDI here. So if I zoom in, I can see all my MIDI. Uh, if I want to just get them so it's more legible when I'm looking at it on here. Um, now I can see all, my, all the MIDI lines up exactly with that transient of the snare. And there's my snare. It will play out in the exact same timing as the original. I'll just get back to what I had there because I already had it set up. But that allows you then to manipulate the snare and adjust it how you want so that you can have whatever kind of sounding uh, reverb that you want on your snare rather than what you were given at the first time it was recorded. I hope this helps you guys out. If it does, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Um, there's going to be more continuations, part four and part five, and I believe I'll probably get up to about part 10 by the time I finish this mix. But I just wanted to go through some real, real little assisting tools that will help you and uh, get you on your way. So catch you on the next one. Peace out.